Welcome back to the IU427 Garage, everybody. Well, it's time to get back to work on the prototype Mark IV. You heard that right. We're not going to have a whole lot of construction updates in this one. We're going to get back to work on the prototype Mark IV from Texas. However, I do have to get some construction work tomorrow done before I get the car down on the lift because Slytherin is still underneath. And so as soon as I get that done, I'm going to be out here. I'm going to go through all of the electrical on the car. So I'm going to go through we already know the car runs because I've had it moved here, there, and everywhere. I've even taken it around the block down here at the new shop. And uh, I will say that I like the way that this car runs. Unlike the Gen 3 Coyote that we just delivered to a customer uh, a while back, um, I think this customer is going to be able to enjoy this car right out of the box without a tune. For the short term anyways, I think he still wants to get it tuned. But uh, I drove it around the block and it actually performs really well. Uh, in go-kart form. So once the body's on the car, I'm gonna put quite a few miles on it before we deliver the car to Texas to the customer. However, tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the boxes of all the electrical stuff that we have for the car. So the, um, the turn signal lights, parking lights for the front, the headlights, the tail lights in the back. I'm gonna put the Russ Thompson turn signal switch, one of the last ones that were available before uh, our buddy Russ passed away into the car, make sure all of that stuff works, um, and then once I'm comfortable that everything works, then we will probably put the dash in for the final time. Um, once the dash is in, then I'll be able to put our under dash panels in the car, and I'll be able to start buttoning up stuff like the side of the foot boxes, so that we can get this thing over to Jeff Miller to get the body put back on it. Now I do have some other stuff that I may not show in the video, um, it may be in the next video, but uh, I've still got to get some of the carpeting finished up. I've got to get the seats mounted, and I've worked on getting the seat bases. We've got a, a set of the Breeze angled seat base mounts for this car that uh, I put a coat of paint on that will be going on the car probably in the next video as well. We've also got to get the seat heaters um, slid in between the, um, the leather covers and the cushions on this uh, this car before those seats go in for the final time as well. So we've got a lot of work to do. So hang with us. We'll be back tomorrow, just a few seconds for all of you, and we'll get to work on troubleshooting or checking all of the electrical components on the car. All right, buddy, it is the next day, and uh, as you can see, I do have some oh, foam, what are they, foam board, two-inch foam board, uh, covered up the the big door opening, the uh, the nine foot wide by eight foot high opening, and I did get the man door in over there. So uh, we've got the AC on, it's cooling off in here, it's actually tolerable right now. But uh, I've jumped into some of the electrical testing. So what I've got here, and I know I'm gonna get some electronics and electrical gurus tell me that these are uh, uh, not to be used. But uh, bottom line is these things solve a, a problem. And, um, you know, you, you could split into the wires and you could solder these and heat shrink them and, you know, then put new connectors on and everything else. But the, the, the problem is, is most of these connectors are already crimped on. And so um, once you cut these off, they're shorter and then you're not going to be able to have enough wire to go into your headlight switch. So these uh, scotch locks that allow you to uh, split or take off a wire like I said, they solve a problem, and if they're done properly and they're done in a spot where they're not going to be exposed to more uh, moisture or rain or anything like that, they work just fine. I've been using these things in the electrical trade for, what, over 35 years, and I've never seen one fail when properly used. So say what you will, they solve a problem. So basically what we're doing here on the older style of speed hut gauges, which this car happens to have, it has a 
separate dimmer switch. Well, let me see, where did I put that thing? Um, here's the driver, the LED driver in the harness. And then we should have, oh, what the hell is it? We've also got a dimmer switch that hangs down below the dash, which isn't hanging down below the dash right now. So anyways, um, I'll come back to that. So basically with that dimmer, that's what actually dims the backlighting for the speed hut gauges, the older set anyway. If you try to use the rheostat that's in the headlight switch, it doesn't dim it, but what it will do is it will turn them off at a certain point when the voltage drops low enough, the LEDs just go out. And I see more problems with guys saying, hey, my dash lights, all of a sudden they don't work. Well, the problem is in most cases that that dash rheostat has been turned over a series of uses, turning the headlights on and off, and you don't even realize it, and then now your dash lights don't work. So what we do on the builds that we're using the speed hut gauges is we actually take the dash light, which is this white wire, and we tie it in with the tail lights or the parking light circuit. So that way, when the headlight switch is pulled to the first click, the dash lights get power. They get full power. They don't get anything running through that rheostat. And so you're not gonna have a problem with the dash lights not working because you've, you're trying to dim it at two locations or actually you're trying to turn it on and off at two locations. One with the speed hunt dimmer and one with the actual um, dimmer that's built into the headlight switch. So we bypass that. Now I did deep in that white wire and I cut it off short and then I used one of these scotch lock connectors in order to splice into that circuit. And like I said, used properly, these things will last forever. The other scotch lock you see is gonna be our ground for our electronic flasher, which is right here. You can see it right back in here. And it has a ground wire coming off of it. It has a fork connector on the end. We're gonna cut that off. We're actually gonna cut this off. I, I found this in one of my uh, um, wire boxes and I figured I might as well use this wire. We're gonna put a female connector on this we're gonna put a male connector on this, and so if this flasher ever fails, the owner will be able to take it, remove it, put a new male connector on the end of the ground, plug it in here, and it should work just fine. Now we have to ground this thing. If we don't ground it, the turn signals will not work. You do not have to change out your flasher, your thermal flasher, for your four ways. Basically, there's enough load on those to effectively flash all four lights. If the problem lies with, is with the, um, uh, uh, the turn signals, when you add the LEDs to the back, sometimes there's not enough load on the circuit to make that thermal flasher work properly. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either add an electronic flasher or you can add a, um, oh, like, like a resistor, an inline resistor, so that it, 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 it gives it load so then the, the, uh, the lights will flash properly. Now, with the electronic flasher, um, sometimes they'll flash a little fast. Sometimes I don't like using those. I'll just use the, uh, the, re the inline resistors or, the, uh, uh, or the, the like rectifiers. I'll put those in so that uh, it adds a actual uh, measured load to the circuit so that it flashes in a pro the proper sequence. Um, it doesn't flash real fast. But uh, we've been lucky with the last two builds where we've used the trailer light converter and the electronic flasher. It seems to flash okay. So that's what we're doing in this one. If it becomes an issue, then we'll change it out. We'll revisit this later. But uh, I'm gonna get finished uh, wiring in that flasher and then we'll put power to this stuff. We'll put uh, our headlights, our tail lights, and our front marker lights in and we'll make sure everything works. As you can see, we've got tail lights in the back. We've got dash lights. We've got uh, our marker lights in the front. And we're gonna shoot for our hazard lights next. Um, I always try to tackle some of the easier ones. So we've got uh, the tail light over here as well. Because um, those little winds will help you when uh, some of the the, the fails come along. So just as a for instance, I had taillights 
and then uh, I hooked up some more wires in the back of the dash and then I didn't have tail lights and I was like oh no well what it was was um, one of the one of the weather pack connectors wasn't completely seated so I had to go in there while I was at it I checked all the crimps on the wire pack connector ends they were good but uh, got that plugged in the way it was supposed to be I probably just didn't plug it all the way in when I put the dash in and uh, I got the tail lights working so now we're going to see if we can do the uh, four-way flashers all right so we've got our four-way flashers working and so now we're going to work on getting the brake lights working well not work on them make sure they work and then after that we'll do our turn signals and then uh, probably finish up with the headlights all right we got our brake light switch adjusted and we push the brake pedal and the brake brake lights light up i can only show you the one because I can't get over there to show the other one and then push the brake pedal at the same time so just uh, trust me they both work all right we've got uh, the rust turn signal switch kind of right here we're going to turn it to the left and we've got uh, flasher in the rear and you can see that up there flasher in the front now we'll go for the right turn And I'm going to have to go around here. We've got our right turn signal on the front. And we got our right turn signal in the back. So, so far everything's checking out pretty well. Other than that one wire that uh, wasn't making connection in that weather pack connector because I didn't plug it all the way in. We're looking pretty good so far. So let me grab the headlights. We'll set those down on the runway of the lift and see if we can't get the headlights to work as well. Okay, so I've got the headlights kind of all in there. I'll put it on parking light. We can see we still got our amber parking lights on, our tail lights on in the back. Pull the headlights and boom, those are pretty bright. So you, if you remember, we changed these out to the HIDs, the, um, the LEDs. And uh, so they're working pretty good. Let's see if I've got the ignition on. If, yep, we can see that they uh, toggle between high beam and low beam. You really can't tell when you're looking just at this angle from the light. But um, so that's working. And you can hear the relay over there clicking on and off. So. I think we're all good with that. We'll go ahead, we'll turn the headlights off, the parking lights off, we'll turn the ignition off. And a uh, little tip for you guys when you're doing this testing, it's really easy to turn that ignition switch, regardless of which ignition switch it is, which is whether it's this, uh, this one with the factory five embossed keys or even the new one. Um, it's real easy to leave it in the on position and you come back the next day and your freaking battery's dead. So always pull the keys out. If the keys are out, the power's off and you won't drain your battery. So we've got uh, all the testing done on all the electrical throughout the car now. We'll, uh, we'll work on buttoning up a lot of the stuff behind the dash now. So all the stuff that's uh, behind the dash here is going to get uh, neatly tucked away. The dash will go in, the Russ Thompson turn signal switch will get mounted, and then uh, that portion will be ready. We'll also uh, start mounting our under dash panels probably in the next video. Um, I've still got some carpet to do. I've got a little bit of carpeting right here behind the seat. That wraps around into our package tray. So that needs to be done. The uh, owner sprung a surprise on me oh two weeks ago or so but i'll get i'll get to that in a second and then we've got the carpeting in the trunk here that drops down inside the actual trunk so that's got to be finished up but that's probably just a few hours worth of work so uh i'll probably finish that stuff off up off camera um one thing that the owner sprung on me was a heights valve he uh he started asking me questions about the power steering and the input for the power steering 
and I told him that I use a Heights valve in uh, Slytherin and so we ended up ordering a Heights valve directly from Heights and uh, that's probably going to get mounted up here in the front of the car probably on the cross member right here but uh, we'll, see, we'll see where it works out the best because I want to be able to reuse the existing power steering lines that are already landed on the rack and basically bring both of those into the heights valve and then get two short hoses made from the heights valve into the rack um, and then uh, he'll be able to adjust it just by opening up the hood, um, turning the knob, and then uh, going on his merry way. So. All right, I think that's going to do it for this one. I just want to thank all of the loyal subscribers who uh, kind of suffered through a lot of the shop updates that we were doing. Um, as I stated in one of the other videos, there just there wasn't any car stuff to do since we didn't have a place to work on the cars. So until the shop was at a point where we could actually get some work done, um, you know, it was what it was. We appreciate all of you that kind of stuck it out and uh, watched the videos and commented and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, if you want to keep up on all the shop updates rather than just seeing them kind of as they've happened on the channel, go over to the Mrs. IE 427 channel. Uh, all those construction updates will be over there from now on. Um, and as always, if you're enjoying the content here, please do the like, the share, the subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.